Hey guys, what's up? This is Kazi. This is my third time making this video. The last two recordings got deleted and they were really long. I'm gonna try to make it short and sweet, right? It only lets me make them better, so that's what I'm actually excited for. Um, anyways, in this video, we're gonna talk about Boolean Algebra Jiu-Jitsu, okay? Uh, before we get to that, I wanna just take a second to show you guys. Check it out. The official Clever Programmer premium short sleeve t-shirt. Custom designed. Let me know what you guys think. And I'll put in the link for you guys below. So if you guys want to actually get it, you can order it. Um, some feedback would be great. If you think it sucks or if you think it's good, let me know. I would love to know that. Let's get on with what we are trying to cover for today, okay? So, uh, I wanna talk about Boolean algebra, all right? So what is it and how does it work and why do we need to know it? It's one of the most important things in programming. That's it, period in all of computer programming languages, anything that you use, even in electricity, it's super important. At the end of the day, everything turns to zero or one or true or false, okay? So we have false or true. Notice how there's special statements in Python, which is why they highlight into the color orange and, Py and then it doesn't give you an error. Python like understands what true and false is. For example, if you do true like this or false like this, uh, it's gonna give you back an error saying, I have no idea what you're talking about. So they're like pre-existing things that are built into Python. Now, why would we need to ever use this, right? Why would we need to use this? Well, let me show you guys something that foreshadows a little bit into maybe our one of our next few videos, like conditionals and control flow, where I'm gonna talk more about if statements, but let me just foreshadow that and show you guys so you guys can see from a bigger picture perspective how it works and in turn that would make you want to learn what it is and then we can get down into the nitty gritty details, cool? So for example, uh, an if statement works like this. You have an if statement followed by some condition which does not need to be in parentheses but I'm just putting in parentheses and that condition evaluates to a true or a false statement, okay? And based on that, right, based on this, then this. So it's like, if that, then this, okay? So if Johnny made more, if Johnny worked overtime and he worked more than 40 hours, then I want to pay him overtime, okay? So for example, uh, the only time this block of code runs is if Johnny made more than 40 hours, which means it needs to evaluate to true. You need to have a true here, okay? So let's say if true print hello, okay? And notice that this block of code runs because this statement is true and then this block of code runs, right? This is the if condition. Uh, it's not very smart what I'm doing here. It's kind of stupid. I'm just hard coding true right in there, which is not what you're going to be doing most of the times, but I'm just doing this to like illustrate how it works in its uh, bare bones skeleton, so to speak. And let me show you if false and then see what happens. Print high. And you can see that this part of the code did not run because it goes, oh, false. It's false, so I'm not gonna run it. I'm not gonna do this, right? If false, then you know, don't pay him overtime or whatever, right? I could have anything else here. I just have print hello, but the implications of this are far more than printing stuff. It's doing actual stuff, right? Now, another reason why this is very important for you guys to learn is imagine if you were hired and you were working in a company and you had to design a system for paying employees. Well, if you do your logic wrong, then you might be paying every employee over time, which means that the company is paying way more money uh, to its employees. Like for example, you might write the logic wrong and 
uh, employee that works three hours might be getting paid overtime for all of those three hours. The company has to pay a lot more money and then the company has to fire a lot of people because they're like, whoa, there's a lot of money going out of our pockets, right? On the other hand, you could have the case where no employee is getting paid overtime, even though they worked over time, over 40 hours. So with great power, right, as being a programmer comes great responsibility. So that's why you wanna learn this stuff really, really well so you don't make these uh, big mistakes and you can help out um, companies and you can help out clients or whoever, right? So we have this case, false print high. That's what happens. But now let's do something more interesting. So I'm gonna introduce you guys to something called comparison operators, okay? So you guys might know the equal equal sign. It compares two things together. Not one equal sign that makes something something. Two equal signs check if one thing is equal to another thing, okay? So I have two equal signs. I have less than or uh, less than. I have a greater than sign. I have a less than or equal to sign. I have a greater than or equal to sign and I have a does not equal sign, okay? These are your comparison operators. Uh, so what do I mean? Five is uh, equal to five. It's going to give me back a true, right? Five is five. How about if I said five does not equal five? What do you think it's going to give me? False, right? That doesn't make any sense. How about five is greater than five? Does that make sense? No, it's not. Five is less than five. Nope. Five is less than or equal to five. It should give me back a true. Five is greater than or equal to five. And it also gives me back a true because it's not greater than, but it is certainly equal to five, okay? So that's how this works. And look, at the bottom, it breaks down into true, false, true, false, right? Now, let's say we wanted to pay Johnny more if he worked, going back to our original example, let's say we wanted to pay Johnny more if he worked extra hours, right? If he worked 40 hours or something. So how would we check that condition if he worked more than 40 hours? How would we check that? We have to make that condition. We have to check that condition. So these are all called conditions because at the end of the day, they evaluate to a true or a false, okay? So this is a condition and then it evaluates to a false here. So let's make a variable called Johnny hours work and let's set that equal to 40. And now let's check it. Johnny hours work is greater than 40. So I'm like asking my computer a question and it'll say false. Okay, so I know I shouldn't pay him overtime then, right? Because I got back a false. What if I did, is he making, is he doing more hours than 30? Okay, good, so at least he's working, right? He's not just not doing anything. Okay, so he's worked more than 30 hours, but he has not worked greater than 40 hours. Okay, has he worked greater than or equal to 40 hours? Mm, it says true. Since I know he hasn't worked greater than 40 hours, then in this statement greater than or equal to 40, I know that he's worked equal to 40. But let's just double check and say equal, equal 40. Okay, cool. So we now know that Johnny has worked exactly 40 hours. So we can't pay him over time in this case, but um, let's just try it out anyways. Let's do, if Johnny, let's turn it into like a, like a conditional statement, which again, we're gonna get more into later is greater than 40, right? Then print pay him overtime. Oh, looks like we're not gonna pay him overtime because he has worked exactly 40 hours. Now let's make Johnny's hours 41 hours. Let's say he's worked 41 hours, right? So overtime. Now let's run this and you can see that it says pay him overtime. So how could this translate for you? Oh, first of all, let's just break down exactly what this turns into, right? So we have this statement, uh, if Johnny worked greater than 40 hours, how does this actually work? Well, what is the variable Johnny hours worked? We made it 41, right? 41 is greater than 40, is that true? It certainly is, 41 is greater than 40, and we get true, and then we get into its most bare bone skeleton structure, which I showed you guys up at the top right here, and it's simple, it's simply a, just a true at the end of the day. And then this block of code runs, okay? And if the same way, the reason why this line of code, uh, for example, like let's say I do this, right? If you work greater than 42 hours, why does this line of code not work? Well, 
Again, Johnny Hours worked is 41. Is 41 more than 42? Of course not. So this turns to false. And when this turns to false, we get back, uh, we actually get back nothing because this line of code does not run. Okay, that's the bare bone, like that's the main reason why we use Boolean operators. There are lots of other reasons that you'll see as well. In the next video, we're gonna get down more into how Boolean logic works. So for now, I showed you guys comparison operators. In the next video, we're gonna talk about Boolean um, logical operators, okay? So for example, we're gonna talk about and, and we're gonna talk about or, and we're gonna talk about not, all right? And how all of those things work in sync with each other. That's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next video.